to the Eating at a Meeting podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Stuckrath, dietary needs expert, certified meetings manager, certified food protection manager. I have searched the globe to find people and businesses who are creating safe, sustainable, and inclusive food and beverage experiences for their employees, guests, and communities. In each episode, you will find authentic conversations about how food and beverage impacts inclusion, sustainability, culture, community, health, and wellness. I know that sounds like a lot, but we're going to cover it all. Are you ready to feed engagement, nourish inclusion, and bolster your bottom line? If so, let's go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Eating at a Meeting podcast. I am your host, Tracy Stuckrat, founder of Thrive Meetings and Events, the Eating at a Meeting podcast, and the online course, Every Meal Matters. So in today's episode, I want to talk about a reception or an event that I recently attended, and I want to talk about what I saw food and beverage-wise at a break, as well as at a, as a dinner reception. And for those who are watching on video, I'm going to actually show you some photos from this event that I took. Um, and for those listening to the show... I, via audio, I am, I'll describe the photos as best as I can to, to give you a better picture of it. And then if you look at the photos in the video, I will put some alt tags in there so that you can visualize what that I'm talking about. Okay. So, um, I, it was my first business trip to go to an event. So I was excited about that. Um, and we, there were 600 people at this event. And so we were, we participated in a variety of different education and things like that. But again, I want to talk about the food and beverage and I did not take pictures of people specifically. And it is literally just of the food and beverage. So I am going to do a share screen here and let's see if I get this right. Where is my photo? Okay. So we're going to do photos. All right. So I'm going to play a slideshow here and I'm going to pause it on each of the photos so I can talk about each one of them a little bit. Okay, so it's this recent dinner reception. And, whoops, let's go back one. So this picture that I have on here is a white bowl um, filled with little, you know, the little black containers with the lids on them. Um, and it is um, on of artichoke za'atar dip. And the white bowl is sitting on a raised platform, you know, so they elevated a a variety of different things on this buffet so that it could give it some, you know, structure and some height to it. Now there is a label on in front of this um, bowl or in front of the structure that it's sitting on that says artichoke, zatar, dip, and underneath it, it says vegan and gluten-free. So, you know, this is, I love the fact that they've got vegan dip and I love the fact that they've labeled it gluten, but I don't, um, well, in making it being it vegan, that means that it, it does not have any dairy in it or egg in it, which is fantastic for allergy wise, but it doesn't tell me anything else. It doesn't tell me what's in it. And you will see that consistently through all the labels that I, that I show you here is that I want to know what's in it because if somebody has a nut allergy and when you're making, um, I want to know if there contains nuts and, and especially when it's vegan because it's probably got cashews to make it creamy. So it's probably got tree nuts in it to do that. So that's my, that is my discussion on that one. The other idea or the other aspect of this is that it is on a raised platform. So if you've got somebody who is in a wheelchair, you know, coming up to try to enjoy this dip, they're not going to be able to access that bowl because it is further back on the table and it is raised on a platform. So that is the first one. And then we're going to hit play and go to the next one. Let's see what we've got. The next one is an olive tapenade. Um, the label, it is, again, it's those black containers with the plastic lids in a white bowl. Um, the label says olive tapenade, vegan, gluten free. And this is actually next to that raised platform. So it's sitting flat on the table, but it's, I, if I remember correctly, cause I didn't take an overall picture of the table. Um, it was pushed a little bit further back. So again, the reach for somebody who is utilizing a wheelchair, 
um, or a scooter or on crutches, it would be a little bit hard to reach into that. But again, I want to know what is in that olive tapenade versus just knowing what it's not filled with. Okay, so this next picture is a picture of some lavash and pita. And those, that is actually each, there's little bags of the lavash and pita in plastic bags with the red label on them. Um, they are sitting in a container, a, or a basket, a metal basket on top of a raised square platform. And then to the right of that is a bowl of hummus and the hummus is in individual servings of hummus in the little black containers with the plastic. Now there is one label for those two items. And so the label says lavash and pita hummus. And then below it, it says vegan and comma gluten free. Now my biggest challenge with this is um, it should be two separate labels because is the, um, is the lavash and pita gluten free? I, I, that I question, um, and is the, or is the lavash gluten free? So to me, that is very, very confusing. It's two different items on the buffet. So it should have two separate labels, one for the lavash and pita and one for the hummus. And then it should be, um, a lot more clear for everybody to understand and communicate what they need. And I did, I love hummus. But, and I love eating it with pita, but I'm gluten free. So I'm not going to take that because I don't, that to me, that label is, is confusing. The other thing for accessibility wise is that again, the pita is raised up on a higher level. There were no servers really in, um, visible, visible to help anyone if they needed help in, a, in getting something off of the buffet. So that this photo, um, shows you a couple of different things that could be changed. There's lots of opportunity here to make change on that. Now, the next two photos are of some citrus matcha smoothie. And there's two different, there's actually four photos of this, but there's two different kinds of matcha. So this one, I love the little containers. They look like little milk cartons with lids on them. Those are placed, um, I mean, these are little tiny, they're like probably three inches, four inches tall, um, and individual servings of it. And they're all, they are displayed on a white plate. And in front of it, it says citrus matcha smoothie. Now there, I'm going to go to the next slide and it's showing you again, the same smoothies from a different angle. And there's a plate of them on the lower table or actually flat on the table and raised behind them on one of those metal plat- square platforms is another plate of this citrus matcha smoothie. And the smoothie is in a greenish color and I love it. But when I Googled citrus matcha smoothie this morning before I did the video, you know, what is in that? Is are, is it a protein smoothie? So are there nuts in it? Are there almonds or cashews? Is there dairy in it? Um, it's not labeled that it's gluten-free or dairy-free or vegan. So... I'm not going to drink that if I have food allergies or if I'm vegan because I don't know what's in it. And so I think this is at that same exact break. So the the food was labeled, but these drinks were not. But now we go to the one right next to it. And I've switched photos now. And I am showing a chocolate um, smoothie that is in the same little cute milk carton looking containers and then the label in front of it says nutty banana espresso. And you can see that there's words beneath that, but the way that it's sitting in the silver um, label stand, those words below it describing it are not showing. And so you can't actually see it. And so in the next photo, I'm switching it. Well, you can't see it again. It's still there. But I, if I zoom in myself, let's see if I can, I can't zoom in on the photo but it says gluten-free and something else. So I don't know what it is unless I picked it up and I don't remember if I picked it up, but that means there's nuts in there and you know, you can't see the sign. Oh, it says vegetarian. So it's gluten-free and vegetarian, but does that, so that means it has milk in it probably. 
It has nuts in it, but what is it? Peanuts? Is it cashews or tree nuts? It's some sort of tree nuts. Um, does it have milk in it? Um, so it just, to me, it shows inconsistency because you're not expressing what is not, what is actually in it. And for somebody with food allergies and or any kind of dietary need that needs to manage what, what they're eating, um, showing what's in the food is actually much more important um, as showing what's not in the food. Now, the next photo I just sli- went to is a picture of four, one, seven different silver milk containers, like creamer containers. They're tall. They're probably about five inches. Um, and in front of the, the ones that are on the table, there's a small sign that says half and half. Now, on a raised platform behind those are two containers um, silver containers, they look exactly like the ones that are in front of them. And in front of them is a small little label that says, um, whole milk or no, sorry. It says skim milk. Um, and then there's a couple of containers behind that. That's definitely not reachable for anybody. Um, but I don't see a label for them. My biggest concern about this, and I've shown all other pictures like this to individuals is that they're, the label is not on the container. And if there's a variety of people coming up and picking up the containers, who knows if they put the right container behind the right sign. And the other, ad, so the inconsistency of that, I think the label needs to be actually on the container. And why not use a erasable water marker that you could put on that container or put um, a, rem- a removable, you know, sticker, right? That can, one of those peel and the sponsor label that you could put on there, right? I say sponsor because it's just the, the cling, a, a cling that you could put on that, that container. The other challenge here is that these are both milk based products. So there's no alternative creamers for individuals who are dairy free or vegan. So you could do soy milk. You could do oat milk. You could do, um, cashew milk, a variety of different alternative, um, milk options for those individuals who have dietary restrictions. Now, this next picture is a a picture of the beverages that were offered. And these are in four different containers. They're silver containers with water bins in them. Um, On the far left one are prepackaged Starbucks um, kind of espresso kind of drinks. In the middle is Gatorade and to the right is Red Bull. I, at this reception, could not find a water bottle to save my life. So I, and then on the other side of this was where I showed you the picture of the creamer was coffee. But again, I could not find water at this reception in the areas that they were displaying the beverages and the food and beverage. Somebody told me later on it was bat, the water was back in a far corner. Don't understand why. So I don't do sugar. So these three options of the Gatorade, Espresso, and the Red Bull are not my beverage of choice. And I also don't do coffee. So um, I I was without a beverage at this event. Um, on this photo too, you can probably tell, you know, just by grasping from the photo that these bins were pushed further back on the table. So this was a 36, um, a 36, it's 30 six inches long. So it is, I think it's 24 inches deep, but the bins were pushed back to the farther side of the table from where people would be grabbing it. So again, for accessibility for someone who utilizes a wheelchair, this would have been hard to grab for them. So that's the break. Um, I would love to hear your comments in the chat um, about what you think about this. Um, and, and if you're listening to this audio file, you can, um, join the eating at a meeting Facebook group. Uh, it is free to join and you can come in and comment on this video. You can also find this video on YouTube, um, on the thrive, just look for thrive meetings and events on YouTube and you will, um, find this video under the podcast, the eating at a meeting podcast videos. So I would love to know your comments on these suggestions that you have about how to do this different setups, because my opinion on these are, it's not the end all be all. So I want to know what your thoughts are as well. So, okay, now I'm going to jump to the cock, to the dinner reception. And this first photo that I have is actually my, 
room overlooked this reception. So it was really cool to come down and see it and see it from above and what it looked like. And this is actually at the end of the reception. It's the picture is um, in the evening. So sun is set, but it shows you that it's around a pool. And if we can talk about um, this setup a little bit. So what you're looking at is um, one, two, six different pools that are lined up two of them, a really long one, then in a short square one, and then to the left of that, a long one, square one, et cetera. So, and in between that, the tables and chairs um, and buffets are set amongst those and around those pool areas. So, and, and above them are bee lights that are strung across the, the grass area and the cement area. So it's a really pretty overview. I love the reception was great, but let's talk about kind of the setup. Someone pointed out on in the Eating at a Meeting Facebook group when I when I presented this that there was no barriers to help people fall to keep from falling into the pool because the pool was not part of you know the pool was a decor item of this event and so there was no safety precautions to protect people from falling in. Excuse me, as we look at some closer up pictures, we can talk about that a little bit more, but. Uh, to me, accessibility wise here, it would be challenging for someone utilizing a wheelchair or a walker or someone who is visually impaired to come into this reception, um, alone. Um, you know, someone visually impaired, especially if, if they didn't have a, um, personal care assistant or with them, you know, to navigate them through this space. And you entered, over here on the far right corner, far middle corner of the photo, you enter the reception that way. And there are at the at the front end of the in between the two pools on the right, there's a bar set up. There's a bar set up, and on the back, underneath the B lights, there are two bars set up. They're on opposite sides of the space um, and opposite ends of the space, um, so they are kind of spread out, but just so you know, during the cocktail reception or during the reception, because the bars were lined up opposite from each other, the lines for them merged in the middle. So there was not a, it was, it was kind of a, what do you call that? Rush hour, you know, for the people, the lines from either bar went this way. And so they merged in the middle. And so it was little, it was kind of confining in that respect. So this next picture is at the very beginning of the reception, and it is a picture of the top of the bar, and I'm showing you plexiglass that was put up on top of the bar. I love the sturdiness of it, and the plexiglass is actually in a wood frame, and the wood frame actually slides onto this um, granite countertop bar. The bars were beautiful, really pretty bars, but the the plexiglass slid onto it. So it made it nice. And there was a ledge there to hold the wine. And on the right side of this photo is the regular bar set up. You can see the different alcohols there as well as the glassware. And on the right of this photo, you can see a, a distant pool as well as some cocktail tables or, or 72 inch rounds. But this is just a picture to show you that they had the plexiglass up there between the bartender and the guest and there's no guests in this photo. Um, you can just see my, um, my beverage, which is a cock is a Pellegrino. So let's see the next picture here is a picture coming into stand, kind of standing from that bar that I just showed you and looking out onto one of the pools and further out to where the cot, the food is being served. And I'm overlooking a 72 inch round. That's got a beautiful orange, um, linen on it with six chairs. So, Let's talk, we can talk COVID setup right now, um, physical distancing. There's only six chair, chairs at the table, which is great. The tables are a good 10 feet from each other. So that's a good spacing wise. Um, so I like that. And then those are scattered throughout the pool, pool deck area. Um, my one issue with this um, is, again, the closeness to the pool. The chairs on this front table 
they seem pretty darn close to the pool. So if somebody had too much alcohol, they could literally probably fall back into that pool from their chair. I, I, nobody, nothing happened, um, thankfully at that event like that. But the other aspect of this is accessibility of getting through this area. I don't have a picture of what the space looked like to the right of this table or to the left of this table, but to the right of the table, if somebody were sitting in those two chairs, it would be really hard for anyone, even somebody just walking to get by that side of the table. So just want to kind of point out the positioning of those tables when we design events. And this was a beautifully decorated event. I liked it, but just some other setup de um, decisions that we need to think about. And now this is a picture, um, again, of the setup. It is from the other perspective, from back where um, the back, the far back end of the reception, looking at the entrance. And I'm looking over the pool. And to the right of me, to the right of the pool are, is a high boy table, a long high boy table with some high boy chairs on it. And to the further away from me is that same orange chair for this same orange table. And there's another table with red linen on it. And from this angle, you can see on the red table, there's actually, a, there's probably four to five feet between the chairs and the pool. But the orange table, the linen table that I was talking about a second ago, there's a little bit more, I, I, don't, I don't think there's five to six feet there, you know, between the chair and the table. So again, it's that accessibility aspect of it, um, being able to maneuver it. And I have to tell you, um, when I was leaving the reception, I left over here on the left hand side of the pool. And there were a group of people standing here. If you can see this rant, this chair, it's at a table with linens, uh, green linen on it. It's very small little section of the photo. But this one guy looked at me and as I was trying to maneuver around, just kind of laughed and, and joked about pushing me into the pool or whatever. And so that's how close we were. And so to me, that is a safety hazard in some respects, um, as well as an accessibility um, issue. So again, this, what we're talking about here in these photos are a reception that I recently attended um, for a industry event and I am, I'm 100% not bashing this event. I'm just pointing out things that we can think about when we're designing our own events and just other things to consider because we, when, and I'm guilty of this as well. And I don't know if it's even being guilty, but it's, it's not necessarily thinking about it from the angles of everyone that's attending. And so we need to think about accessibility. We need to think about safety and we need to think about um, what we're serving. So a new phrase that I have is that it's not, we need to make sure that our food and beverage functions, people can get to them. They can reach them, meaning the food setups, as well as they can eat them. So what are those, how can we create that inclusive, equitable experience for everyone when we're designing our food and beverage functions? Okay. So Tracy Stuckrath with Thrive Meetings and Events and the Eating in a Meeting podcast. And again, if you're listening to this on audio, you will be able to access the video of it um, to see the photos that I'm actually talking about um, on my YouTube channel. Just look for Thrive Meetings and Events um, and or you can find them in the Eating at a Meeting Facebook group as well. They will be this video will be posted there, too. So my next picture is is a picture of the bar from a different angle. You can see my shadow in the front of the bar. Um, you cannot, you can kind of tell that the plexiglass is on this bar and that's the angle. That's why I took this photo was to show the plexiglass on the bar. Um, and that's kind of basics of that photo. This is a different picture of the bar. It is, um, a close up of the cutout in the plexiglass on the bar to show the um, the route or the way that a bartender was handling handing drinks to attendees. Um, she the, And this is basically for COVID reasons that the plexiglass is up. The bartender is masked um, and she does hand the glassware, your beverages through that cutout in the plexiglass. So that is what I'm talking about on that one. Um, the next few pictures are just pictures of buffet setups with the plexiglass on the table to show you how it was being done by this, this property. 
Um, again, they have designed in this photo, um, it is a white, white buffet table. It's a six foot table on the um, back side of the table. This is going to actually be the pastry table. Um, on the front and front side, customer side of the table is the plexiglass. It's on a nice wooden um, display or wooden frame that the plexiglass sits in. And there you can see that there's two cutouts on that plexiglass for the food and beverage to be handed, handed to you through that hole. On the back side behind the plexiglass are some long white plates stacked up. Um, and behind that is a hot a shaving dish full of hot chocolate. They were doing uh, strawberries dipped in chocolate. And then they had to the right of the, the strawberries, you can see kind of behind that white chocolate contained the tainer, the chafing dish. But behind that, to the right of them in this photo are different dip kinds of dips that people could ask to get the chocolate. The strawberries dipped in chocolate and then you could put sprinkles on it and things like that. So I took this photo to show you how that display is being set up. Um, the next photo is again, that same type of plexiglass setup. This is for one of the, um, entree tables. You can see heat lamps in it. There's wooden boards that the food will be displayed on. They do, they are utilizing, um, compostable bamboo plates for people to, um, utilize, um, when they are handed their food and beverage or the food and beverage will be placed on those at the far end of this table. Um, actually are sanitizer, pump sanitizer containers that um, they recommended that everybody use when they're going to the buffet. Again, another picture of the buffet table um, with the plexiglass on it, just a different angle. This is a different setup of um, they've got um, long white plates that are laid out that the appetizers were actually going in or the, they're not appetizers, I guess they're appetizers, but they're tapas. Um, they're raised on a silver um, just a silver level, square level thing to raise them up and give them some height and structure on that. But the food is being handled by the servers behind the plexiglass or will be handled by the servers behind this plexiglass to the attendees. Um, just another angle of that one, that table with the plexiglass and the wooden boards. This picture here, this next picture is the servers bringing out the food and placing them on those different level, um, different shaping dishes, not shaping dishes, but late raised um, decor. I'm showing you the bamboo plates, but this is from the other angle. It's got the end. I'm on the end where the antibacterial hand cream stuff. So it's just showing server setting the food. Now I am going to jump a really a now into a lot of the labeling. Here is the labeling. This picture is, a picture of the label of the chocolate covered strawberries. It's in front of the plexiglass in the distance behind through the plexiglass. You can see the raised platforms that the sprinkles and everything were on. And you can see that there's bamboo plates here. My challenge with this is that the desserts, this dessert label does not contain any allergens on it. Strawberries are fine. Chocolate covered. I want to know, does the chocolate contain milk? Is the chocolate vegan? Is the chocolate vegetarian? Does the chocolate contain nuts? It doesn't say anything on that. Having talked to the pastry chef myself that night, he did confirm with me that it was vegan chocolate, but why not communicate that to someone who is vegan um, and or has a dairy allergy, milk allergy, because they would want to participate and, and enjoy those beautiful chocolate covered strawberries. And this photo here is a picture of four of the other desserts that were being offered at this event. And as you can see, they're all individual size servings. So you've got a red velvet strawberry cake. You've got a German chocolate cake and a tiramisu. Um, that's the ones that we can see the labels um, as my face just gets really close to the camera there. Um, reading that and on to the right of that is another dessert, which I can't read the label on it. Um, but so the red velvet strawberry cake, um, strawberry icing on top looks beautiful. It, all of these are served on black plates. They're individual servings, um, on each one of them. So the strawberry cake cake has, um, 15, 18 different pieces there that people can pick up. They, they are served in individual plastic containers so that people can easily take them. 
Um, as you can notice, just like on the chocolate strawberry, chocolate covered strawberries, these labels do not contain any allergens in them. So it doesn't say that they're vegan. It doesn't say they're vegetarian. It doesn't say they contain dairy. It doesn't say they contain nuts. So to me, I'm not eating any of these desserts because they don't tell me what's in it. And so the other aspect of this is the red velvet strawberry cake that's right at the front edge of the table, easily accessible by anyone. But the other two, the um, German chocolate cake is on one of those silver framed boxes and raised up a little bit higher than the red velvet cake. And then the tiramisu is on an even higher one. So for somebody to access that um, utilizing wheelchair, it would be a little bit harder. All right. So let's look at this picture here is of um, the desserts. All right. So let's look at this picture. This is picture is of the desserts. And you can see on this picture, there are three different types of desserts. And we've got in the front is a red velvet strawberry cake um, on the Right behind that, to the right of it, is German chocolate cake. And behind that even is, um, on a higher level one, is tiramisu. And each of these different desserts are showcased on black plates. They're individual portion sizes. And each of those individual portion sizes is in a plastic container of its, of its own so that people could easily go up and pick up the dessert that they choose. So a couple things that I want to point out on this picture is one that the labels don't have anything on them except for the name of the dessert. So it is, does not say it's vegan. It does not say it's vegetarian or gluten-free. It does not say that it contains anything. And so that's my biggest challenge with this picture and this presentation is, is that. And so making sure that those things are, um, noted on on this for our, all of our attendees. The other thing I want to note on here is about, again, accessibility. So you can see that the and the, the red velvet um, strawberry cake is on the is actually on the table. The plate is on the table and it's actually at the front end of the table. So it's easily picked up by the attendee. Well, the German chocolate cake is in the middle of the table to the right on one of those square um, metal risers. So that would be very hard for somebody who utilizes a wheelchair to actually access, get access to. So the German chocolate, ch the German chocolate cake is actually on, you know, behind that is probably in the middle of the table and it's on one of those silver risers. That's really pretty, but it makes it higher and it would make it a definitely a harder reach for somebody who has utilizes a wheelchair. Um, or has limited arm span, right? And then the tiramisu is on a higher level riser than the German chocolate cake, and it is on the back edge of the table. So that does make it definitely a lot harder for anyone who utilizes or has a short arm span, et cetera. The one thing about this table that I do want to say is that the executive pastry chef was at this table all the time, as well as his sous chef, pastry chef. So there was someone there to hand out um, desserts if necessary. But for ease of access, for not having to utilize or ask for help, um, it would make it easier if maybe, and maybe to the right, and I, to be honest with you, I didn't pay attention, maybe the tiramisu was on the on the table to the right of this and the German chocolate shake so that there were options of all kinds across the board. But for somebody who has a food allergy, I wouldn't be eating any of these desserts because I don't know what is in them. But again, maybe the, because the executive chef, pastry chef was standing at this table the entire event, he could actually answer the questions because he knows how it was made because he and his team made it. Um, this is a different picture of a tart and, um, oh my gosh, it's individual servings. It's on a black platter again. Um, the tart his it looks like it's got a piece of mango, raspberry, watermelon, blueberry, or maybe that's a strawberry in there. Um, it looks like it's on the front end of the table as well. So that's easy for someone to pick up. It does remind me years ago, um, at an event, somebody named, somebody had tarts out and they said they were gluten-free, but they didn't note that they were dairy-free or that they contained dairy or one or the other, but they had totally mislabeled it incorrectly. 
And it was a celiac conference for individuals with celiac. And so nobody could eat the dessert because it actually, they had not prepared it the right way. Um, Here is a different picture of some more desserts on that same buffet. Again, not labeled individual servings. And again, three levels of tiering on this. So I just wanted to give you a bigger, broader perspective of that. And oh, actually, and here's a different, um, here's a close up of Biscoff cheesecake. Um, I like this presentation. It looks like little jars of secret jars. If you open it up and you can see the the Biscoff. So that's got gluten in it. It's got dairy in it. Uh, looks like there's a nut on top. So those three just allergens should actually be labeled on there. And one final dessert picture here. I, I took lots of pictures of dessert, apparently. This one is a white chocolate passion fruit mousse with tapioca. It's in a really fun octagon um, six six-sided little plastic container. Um, I did talk to the pastry chef when I was chatting with him in general. This was, this is the gluten-free option that was offered for this dessert buffet. So the only, the two gluten-free options were the chocolate covered strawberries, as well as this white chocolate passion fruit mousse with tapioca. And I have to tell you, this was so good, but the, I want it to be labeled. I don't want to necessarily have to talk to the chef to eat my food every single time. Um, And as you see with some other labels coming up, we'll talk about that disconnect a little bit more as well. The, um, and I think I mentioned earlier that the only vegan dish dessert was the strawberries and chocolate mousse or chocolate um, covered strawberries. So now let's jump to some of the entrees and what I looked saw here. So here's just a label of um, one of the entrees, small appetizer. It is positioned in front of the plexiglass. In the back of this picture, you can see one of those tiered silver teal, tiered stations. This food was not accessible for people. It was behind a plexiglass, and so you had to rely on a server to give it to you. Um, the shrimp cocktail shooter with brandied cocktail sauce and lemon. Um, it says it's gluten and dairy-free. So it does not say that it contains shellfish. It does not say that it contains alcohol. So if you have anybody who is allergic to alcohol or doesn't eat alcohol, drink it or eat it, that's a a challenge there. Um, So just wanted to point that one out. Let's look at the next one. This is uh, is the sign for ahi tuna cornet with use. Yuzu guacamole and micro green micro cilantro. Um, it says it contains gluten and it contains dairy. And again, this is just a picture of the labeling of the food. You can't see the food. You see just the plexiglass. And um, on here, it should say contains, um, because we already have it says contains gluten, we should say it contains fish. Because what if somebody doesn't I mean, know that ahi tuna is that, right? So we need to be as transparent as possible. That's my goal in in labeling food is being as transparent as possible, especially especially when you're talking about the top nine allergens. And on that note, just to remind everybody, the top nine allergens are fish, shellfish, wheat, soy, milk, peanuts, tree nuts, and eggs. And then the ninth one is sesame. And that became the top ninth allergen in the U.S. on April 24th, 2021. So those are the top nine allergens. And when we look at the picture of the tuna, I'm going to show you. I'm going to see the next picture. Here's the picture of the tuna. Um, in And it contains gluten because it's in a cone. The coronet is a cone. So that's the serving part of the serving vessel. This actually is in another plastic container. It, the cornet is actually in rice. Um, so if you look at that closely, you can see that there's rice in there. And for those who are listening via audio, this is a uh, white long platter and it's got um, about four times six, 24 different containers of this ahi tuna cornet on top of a white platter. And the white platter is raised onto a silver riser. Um, it's a really pretty presentation. I really like it. But, you know, if we're already saying that it contains gluten, then we should say that it contains tuna as well. And again, these were not accessible by attendees. So the accessibility, this was had to be handed to you by a server um, across the board because of the plexiglass. 
Now, this next picture is of the golden beet salad, and I am a humongous fan of beets and arugula. So I am, I was so excited about this. This picture here, for those on audio, it's just a picture of the label. You can see the risers behind it, behind the plexiglass, but this is specifically just a picture of the label. But it says golden beet salad with arugula, orange segments, fennel, Humboldt fog, toasted almonds, apple mustard vinaigrette. And then below it, it says gluten and dairy free contains nuts. Okay. I like that. It says it contains nuts. But now let's look at the picture of the food. And this is when I had picked it up. Well, let's go back to the other picture. Does anybody know what Humboldt fog is? I picked it up to understand what it was to to test it out because, again, I love beets and arugula and fennel. Can anybody tell me what the Humboldt fog is in this picture? It is blue cheese. So the sign, we'll go back to that, it says it's gluten and dairy-free. Well, that sign is incorrect because it does contain dairy. Dairy is cheese. And so I did point this out to the server who then communicated to the executive chef As far as I know, they did not change the sign out during the event, but I'm hoping that there was a server there, and there were servers there a lot because they were passing it out, that they communicated to the attendees that it contained dairy going forward. I don't know that. I didn't stand over their shoulder and watch that, but I just wanted to point that out. We need to double check some of our labeling and did you proof these? Did you have an opportunity as a planner to proof the signage? Um, and who's responsible for for making that signage. So that's just something that we need to make sure. Did the chef proofread these labels before they got printed and displayed? Um, Okay, so here I should have put this with the, here's another picture of the cocktail shoot, the shrimp cocktail shooters with the brandied cocktail and lemon. So that's just a picture of the shrimp as well as the signage. This next picture This um, I put this up. This is a picture of the golden beet salad label, but behind it is a picture of behind it is a picture of uh, tomatoes and mozzarella. So on this picture here, it is a sign of the golden beet salad that we just went over a minute ago. But behind it, you can see that there is a long platter, silver platter with a variety of of number of little bowls that have tomatoes and buffalo buffalo mozzarella and again the sign is in front of the plexiglass that is behind the plexiglass just so you know one that's you would think that it was labeled wrong but they were putting both of those salads the beet salad and this buffalo mozzarella tomato salad next to each other on the same platter so it is a little bit confusing it could potentially be confusing for people especially when you're just looking at this picture it's labeled incorrectly right but the um, golden beet salad was on the big silver riser behind it. So just wanted to kind of just point that out for everybody. Let's see what picture I'm on in here. The Okay, so this is just a, this next picture is a picture from the long side of a table behind the plexiglass. So on the chef's side of the table, I just wanted to show you the bamboo platters here that were used to serve the food and beverage the plexiglass on the left-hand side that the server would serve it through. Um, You see above this dish, which I don't remember what they are, is uh, the heat lamp to make sure that they stayed warm. I just wanted to show you that picture of the side. There's a a broader picture of the same thing. It's from the long length side of the buffet station. This picture here is a picture of a vegan jackfruit crab meat crab cake and so it it is there's no crab meat in it the crab meat is jackfruit the quote unquote crab meat is jackfruit i have to tell you this was delicious such a good presentation um i like it it's it the crab cake or the jackfruit cake was on a it's being shown here on a wooden board underneath a heat lamp and there are small square um recompostable serving dishes that it's on. And there's about 12 of those um, crab cakes on that wooden board. And here is a picture from the front side with me holding the, the labeling for it. So it says jackfruit crab cake with a cauliflower puree, 
pickled jicama and carrots. And below that, it says it's vegan, gluten, and dairy-free. So I love that, that it's vegan. Um, I have to say this is probably the only vegan dish that they served entree-wise because the two salads actually had cheese on them, so they don't make them vegan. So, But I love this. It was absolutely delicious. It is something that we can all add to our menus. And, you know, as an offering, that's very substantial. I could have eaten those all day long. And actually, the hotel said they get a lot of great compliments on that dish. Now, next to that was a, uh, um, this picture shows you what was next to that. And it's Mary's organic chicken breast with roasted fingerling potatoes, snap peas, crispy parsnips, and chicken jus, which is the little sauce. Um, It says it's gluten and dairy free. And beautiful presentation. Again, this is on a wooden board. What you see is 12 different of these little platters on recyclable, compostable plates. Um, And you also see the heat lamp. And behind that, you see the chaise lounges that are there. But I'm holding up the labeling in front of this chicken. So I like that it's gluten and dairy free. The... It was pretty. It was pretty darn good. It's. Um, I was trying to think of anything else that I think about that that picture. No, I think everything is good on that one. Let me know if you see anything that I don't see because we, you know, we have to have double. We have to have multiple eyes check this stuff. So, um, make sure that you and the chef are checking these. Make sure somebody outside is checking these. Do you have a culinary concierge? You know that, like me, to hire you know, to do those things, to check that stuff. But, you know, just make sure that you've got double eyes and making sure everything is correct. This is the the other main entree dish that was served on that same buffet. So we had the jackfruit crab cake, the Mary's organic chicken, and now we've got braised short ribs with whipped Yukon potatoes, globe carrots, gremolata, and a port reduction. So it says it's gluten-free, but it contains dairy. So the dairy, the, let's go back to the chicken one real quick. I want to make sure. So the chicken and the jackfruit were dairy free. So if you needed to go dairy free, you did to have two options on the main entree piece portions. Um, Cause you can't have this um, braised short rib. I did not eat this, so I can't tell you how good it was, but the presentation was great. And for everyone on audio, again, this is on the meat is, Behind the plexiglass, I'm holding up the sign in front of the plexiglass. It is on a booze board, um, work board, wooden board. And you can see about 18 of these little square platters with the braised short rib on it um, with the heat lamp on top. So great presentation. I do want to say that the, uh, the port reduction, I would say it contains alcohol as well for those individuals who are avoiding that. And might want to um, just talk through what the gremolata is. Let's see. On the kitchen, I'm going to thekitchen.com. And it's the K-T-C-H-N.com. And let's see. What does this say down here? I'm looking to the ingredients. Parsley, garlic clove, and lemons. So that is vegan, basically. Well, not basically. That is vegan. Gremolata is vegan. But somebody who doesn't know what gremolata is, they would be questioning that. So we want to make sure that somebody is there to answer questions because it's not labeled as such. But what if it was a different sauce that contained nuts? And um, yeah, I can't remember the name of it. So we'll get to that back in a minute. So let's see. What do I have next? The next picture is a different picture of the short rib from the from the side angle and then another one again so overall you know you can see the different types of labeling that were there so you know we've got gluten and dairy free that was kind of what was labeled the most on a variety of these options the only thing vegan offered was the jackfruit crab cake and that strawberries and milk chocolate dipped in chocolate but nothing the dessert again the desserts were not labeled so These are just the things that I want to point out. Definitely talk about, comment in the, um, below the video, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, definitely put your comments in here because I want to know what you learned, what you saw that I didn't see, because again, we need to have multiple eyes and 
I still can't remember that food. But anyways, I appreciate you listening. This is Tracy Stockworth with the Eating at a Meeting podcast and the Eating at a Meeting at a Facebook group. So if you're listening to it on audio, definitely come join our Eating at a Meeting Facebook group. I post the pictures online for everybody to look at. I want comments. I want us all to learn about how we can create safe and inclusive food and beverage experiences for everyone. And um, we can all learn from each other. So until next time, stay safe and eat well. Thanks for listening to the Eating at a Meeting podcast, where every meal matters. I'm Tracy Stuckrat, your food and beverage inclusion expert. Call me and let's get started right now on creating safe and inclusive food and beverage experiences for your customers, your employees, and your communities. Share the podcast with your friends and colleagues at our Eating at a Meeting Facebook page and on all podcast platforms. To learn more about me and receive valuable information, go to tracystuckrath.com. And if you'd like more information on how to feed engagement, nourish inclusion, and bolster your bottom line, then visit eatingatameeting.com.